So as we dive headfirst into the next volume over here, it starts out with a, a bang, I would say, and, uh, and we see some ingenious work by Sanji as well. One Piece Chapter 368, Sea Train Battle Game. Well, hello, my brothers and sisters of the Nerd Nation. I, as always, am Jim, here to bring you another review on the awesome and epic and Sniper King-filled tale of One Piece. Now, our last chapter, of course, Thoth finishing off Volume 38, and then we're going to dive headlong right into Volume 39. The artwork on this cover is particularly nice. I really enjoy the look of kind of Frankie behind all muscled up, Luffy in the middle there, uh, Zoro just down looking like he's about strike, you know, posed and striked and ready to kill, and then you've got Robin, You've got, uh, what the hell is that guy's name? The, the Captain Bone guy or whatever, you know, that uh, that's there. Anyway, some of the, the, the CP guys that are in the cars and what have you. But uh, very, very cool stuff, man. And this one starts off very nicely. And as a matter of fact, because this one starts off in the first scene is, uh, the first page is Usopp, and he's singing his song about the Sniper King. He's taken on this persona. And although everybody, uh, including the readers, of course, the audience, obviously know that it is Usopp, um, you know, Frankie and Sanji are kind of humoring him and whatnot, but he starts out with singing this song and whatnot, and I thought it would be nice to commemorate it over here. You're actually going to see a video of the unboxing of, uh, of Usopp uh, in my Portrait of Pirates series of videos, and that should be up here uh, the next couple of days, and, uh, and you'll get to see a detailed description of it, but I thought it just wound up falling into place and it was very nice. So, without further ado, uh, we will wind up uh, the la last chapter in the last, uh, you know, uh, chapter of, of the, uh, that ended off the last volume, left us obviously on the sea train and uh, in the Sniper King, which is Usopp appearing, and, uh, and obviously him and Frankie and Sanji about to go toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe with some of the CP members and try to rescue Robin. So that's where we left off, and that's where we pick up. And, uh, and actually, for the most part, the entire chapter takes place on the actual uh, the Puffing Tom train. There's, uh, with the exception of, of two pages, where they kind of take us back um, to the Rocket Man just to sort of check in with with Luffy and the and company, and uh, and we see that uh, that that Frankie's two uh, square Afro um, sidekicks or whatever, as well as Nami have have changed. Nami's in a very alluring, sexy type outfit with her stomach uh, showing and everything else, which of course. We see, you know, Pauly is like, oh my god, that's so bad. I don't know if Pauly, like, grew up in a church or whatever, but for a dude that has, like, gambling problems and, like, smokes cigars, you think that he'd like to see half-naked women? I don't know. You know, I'm not here to judge. Maybe his preference is something else. I have no idea. All I know is that, uh, with really, that that whole thing that takes away, for, and it takes away just for a couple of pages, is, um, you know, he hold, she, she's holding a new climate baton, and they're like, oh, did you get a new weapon, Nami? And she's like, no, this is... Usopp made this for me, you know, he put a, uh, a seashell into, or not a seashell, <laughs> a seashell, one of the dials, one of the dials into it, and, um, you know, and, and now it's perfected and this and that, and then you kind of see this grim look of uh, of Nami and uh, and Luffy, and they're like, oh, Usopp, you know, and they're kind of like getting sad, and then Zoro's like, don't get sad, <laughs> you know, so, anyways, uh, the, the whole point of this one is really nice, because we get to see Sanji and Frankie working together in action, in unison with Usopp, the Sniper King, and what they wind up doing is, is of course, uh, CP9 has been alerted to them, and um, and, and uh, you know, Lucci basically just says, just calm down. You know, if they 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 couldn't, you can't get on or off the the train in mid travel. So they're we're stuck with them, and they're stuck with us. Uh, they can't escape. So just you know, search the search everything methodically, car by car. We'll we'll run across them, right? So, um, so as they wind up, uh, as they wind up doing that, and and, uh, and and you know, we get this this team that kind of goes back. Um, we wind up getting them sort of lured into the back car. They hear that they're at the back, that they're in the back car, you know. Uh, so Captain T Bone and uh, and a lot of his guys are working their way towards the back of the train, and they're they're being lured back there, obviously by by Sanji and Frankie and uh, and Usopp. And uh, and it was funny because Sanji's like, "Hey, are you strong?" And, and Frankie's like, "Yeah, I'm really strong, you know, <laughs> especially strong this week. We know he's a cyborg." Sanji did not know that, but anyway, they lure all these guys to the last car over there, and then they wind up going and actually, uh, you know, closing the door. And Usopp nails starts nailing it shut, you know. And it's funny because Sanji's like, "God, you're so crappy with a hammer, you know." And Usopp, remember, he made all these makeshift repairs, and he always said, "I'm not a carpenter, you know. I just do my best." Anyway, uh, as they wind up making their way to the back door and they're trying to shoot and everything else, and, and Captain T-Bone's like, no, we want to take them alive, wait for me. And he's like, 
right angle flash, boom, swash, you know, and he goes and, and cuts the door open. As the door opens, and they go, what the hell, there's nobody there, and it's the end of the train, you know. And he goes, and he's, they must have, they're trying to escape it or whatever, and he looks up on the top of the train, and there they are running down the train, and he can see a couple cars up, what's about to happen, and it's great, man, it's so well thought out, man. You gotta, you gotta give it to Sanji, because I'm, I'm thinking this was his plan, right? So anyway, he's like, no, it's a trap, it's a trap, everybody retreat, retreat to the forward cars, and everybody's getting toward, move, moving towards the forward cars, and as they go and do that, they can't get through the next door, right? Uh, you know, so I, I think from the sixth to the fifth car, and they're like, no, it's sealed, it's locked, right? <laughs> they wind up luring them to the back cars, a whole bunch of these agents and everything else and whatnot, right? And then going and, <laughs> and pulling the pin and dropping the last two cars back behind them, you know? And I like how uh, the Sniper King, Usopp, goes and he's like, yeah, but won't that, you know, won't this, isn't this the same tracks that Luffy and them are taking? And Sanji's like, well, they're just going to have to deal with it. So there's going to be these two train cars just, you know, hanging out on the tracks over there, providing they don't get blown off into the water or whatever, now that they don't have any momentum after they stop from a couple minutes. So uh, we also get to see Frankie in action a little bit. And really, this is, we know what Frankie can do, uh, but Sanji, of course, is, is kind of new to it. And, and doesn't really uh, understand, doesn't know that he's a cyborg. So we wind up having, uh, you know, some other kind of stragglers and some other guys they're dealing with. You know, Sanji takes a couple of them out, a couple of them pull out these big guns and go and, and go to fire at the, at, at them. And uh, and Frankie winds up stepping in front of them and just takes the bullets, you know. <laughs> they pretty much just impact on him and then fall off. And he winds up nailing the guys, you know, taking them out. Uh, they're surprised that he could take the impact of the bullets. But really what it does, it serves the purpose of letting, you know, Sanji and Usopp, the Sniper King, um, know that, you know, that he's that he's pretty much impervious in several parts of his body. So he goes and says, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm a cyborg. You know, I, I, you know, I get this, I get that. And he goes, uh, and he says something about I have a cold stomach because I've got, you know, I've got a fridge with ice cold soda in there. And they're like, oh, cool. <laughs> so Usopp goes and pokes him in the back with a needle. And he's like, oh, <laughs> he jumps, you know. And Usopp's like, yeah, what the hell? I thought you were a cyborg. And he's like, listen, parts of me are cyborg, you know, first of all. So there is parts that do hurt and that he's sensitive to and everything. That's where he gets, he segues into the whole being sensitive about cold thing. But the funny part is, is that he goes and he says, listen, when I was, uh, you know, designing this and everything like that, I couldn't reach my back, you know. So basically his back is still, you know, flesh and bone and, and mostly human and what have you. So uh, it was pretty funny, though, hearing him talk about it. So uh, really the chapter uh, is very nice, very action-packed. They wind up going and kind of moving up into the next car, and they wind up happening upon, um, what's his name over here, uh, uh, Wands? Uh, Wands, the CP7 cooking fighter, right? And this dude just looks fucking crazy. He just looks like the Mad Hatter, right? That's what I thought of when I saw him anyway. So anyway, the dude's like, oh, you want some ramen? You hungry? This, that, what's up, guys? And, and they're just like, okay, whatever. Well, okay, ramen it is, but before we get to that, there's a little bit of a uh, little bit of stuff you should know and blah, blah. And he goes, so he winds up, he's, uh, his nose hairs can create like a net, right? Uh, or they create like a net. And the dude goes, so he's like, so I just swallow some flour. And then he goes and he like, it's just gross, man. He just makes pasta out of his nose and then tries to put it in a bowl and give it to them. And they're just like, no way, dude. You know. But anyway, they're just like, hey, listen, we got to get past you here, dude. And they don't realize that they're going to have to fight him at, until this point. And he's like, if you want to pass through this car, you must first defeat me. So obviously we're going to have to fight uh, Wands, the, the weirdo with the uh, the pasta coming out of his nose over here. So uh, all in all, a very fun chapter and a great way to start off the, uh, certainly a great way to start off a new volume. And uh, and like I said, just nice and action packed. And uh, and I like these chapters that do kind of go, even though you got a few different things going on, it's nice that they focus the majority of the time on, on Sanji and Frankie and them trying to start to get something going. Because their end game is to rescue Robin, obviously, right? But they know that there's a ton of different guys they got to go through and dispose of. And that was genius, getting rid of those those two cars you know they wind up getting rid of captain t-bone as well as about 50 uh 50 of the men that were that were on that you know on that train that they would have normally had to fight through so very very smart of him uh my chapter question for you though brothers and sisters is what are your thoughts uh initial thoughts on this uh this this guy wands this uh, this cooking fighting fighting cook or whatever <laughs> uh, my initial thoughts personally are, yeah, he looks batshit crazy. And then, of course, too, it's just sort of gross that he's, you know, he's making pasta out of his, uh, coming out of his nose. But let me know what your thoughts are, brothers and sisters, and leave that in the, uh, leave, put, oh, well, hold on. Put your answer to that question in the comments down below. Feel free to hit the thumbs up, the like button, if you should think that I deserve it. Sometimes I just, I, you know, I don't know what happens. I have like a mental seizure. Uh, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. We will look forward to catching all of you. In the next fun nation. Remember to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and my other channel.